So you like snakes, do you? Wait, no, you don't? Why'd you click the video? Oh, you must be a subscriber. <coughs> Today, we're gonna learn about the striped garden noodle, or uh, the common garter snake. This snake represents a turning point in young Daniel's life. You see, when I was a little boy, some four odd years ago, Wait a minute! I found myself walking in the woods, and just below my feet was none other than the striped garden noodle. Now here comes the dilemma. Do I run away like an absolute baby? Or do I gather the courage to pick up the scary long boy and become forever known as the coolest kid in the forest? Or um, something like that. I don't know if there was kids there, but you know what I mean. And while most people would absolutely cry if they were less than three feet from a danger noodle, I picked it up with my own bare hands. And this was a defining part of my childhood as I observed the deliberate wiggles and movements from the snake I couldn't help but feel captivated by its instinctual response. A fear for its own life in the face of this giant clothed creature, it was a sight unlike anything I've ever witnessed before. A raw display of survival instincts and the delicate balance between predator and prey. It made me realize there's a world that operates outside the comfort of everyday human life, and each of these creatures, majestic or ugly, all play a role in this thing we call nature. Garter snakes are medium-sized diurnal snakes that are found throughout most of North America. They belong to the family Colubridae, which simply put is like very thin-bodied, colorful snakes that want to be venomous, but they are about as spicy as like salt and pepper. So yes, garter snakes do technically produce a neurotoxic venom, but it's very mild and not really enough to cause more than swelling in some individuals that have an allergic reaction. Taking a closer look at garter snakes, you'll notice they don't all look the same. To me, garter snakes always look like black snakes with three lateral stripes of yellow coming from head to tail. But in Texas, they have more of a checkered pattern. In Florida, they're blue. And in California, they have the red mountain garter snake. And they also have a snake that looks like a combination of all other garter snake colors. And they don't all look the same because garter snakes are really a catch-all term for 35 different recognized species and subspecies. The one I'm working with is the common garter snake, which has plenty of color variation as well. The garter snake is an opportunist predator. They eat practically anything, including toads like the invasive cane toad, which is actually really impressive because cane toads have large poison glands, making them basically inedible for most predators. The garter snakes have a long evolutionary predator-prey relationship with poisonous toads and newts. Over time, the toad develops toxins for self-defense, while the snake develops toxic immunities to allow the digestion of said toad. This adaptation does come at a cost, however. It seems consuming the toxin can lead to a reduced speed and sometimes no movement for extended periods of time, along with impaired thermal regulation. I couldn't wrap up this video without talking about hibernation. Surviving out here in the Midwest is no easy task, and just about every animal has some strategy to survive the cold winters. Garter snakes are no exception. They hibernate in dens. That's right. This isn't any old batch of noodles. This is an entire pasta right here. Yes, they gather in the thousands. You gotta send this one to your friend if they don't like snakes. Anyways, the snakes live in dens to retain heat and moisture and increase the odds of surviving a predator attack. And let's be honest, I think we're all going to keep our distance. During hibernation, snakes stay hydrated by absorbing moisture through their skin. They do not eat anything during this period because their body temperatures are too low to digest food. And like other animals that hibernate, they store body fat before winter to prepare for that dormant season. Last but not least, the conservation status of the common garter snake is labeled as least concerned by the IUCN, but other garter snake species are in danger. That's pretty much it for the garter snake, so if you liked the video, make sure to smack that like button. Throw me a comment or question below. I've been trying to get to those as much as possible. Put a bunch of information in the description. Check that out as well. And if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel for more wildlife content. Thank you so much.